Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroup in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I'm doing the new arrival video for April 7th, 2023. Decent amount of new arrivals to show you guys this week and some hotly anticipated new arrivals. Uh, also, I've got a slew of stuff I'm going to show you guys that's going on the uh, gold membership this weekend. It's the most amount of stuff I've ever put on the website. I'll tell you about that after the new arrivals. It's essentially, uh, yeah, I'll explain it after the new arrivals. Okay, a lot of good pre-orders were announced this week. I will start there. Uh, They're releasing the uh, self-titled Cult album. That is coming out May 12th. Uh, the two Verb by Request series they announced this week are pretty solid. I'm a big fan of actually both of them. Uh, they're doing Gobble Zabora, the uh, Sorcerer, Verb by Request. The Verb by Request is supposed to be using the best available sources, so they're saying that they're going to be analog when available. A couple of them I heard, like the Alice Coltrane, Pata, the El Duad, sounded absolutely fantastic. So here's high hopes for this. Uh, you know, I'm assuming a lot of the impulse tapes exist, so they're going to be cutting these things from the master tapes just because they're doing the uh, Verve series stuff from the master tape. Ryan Smith has been cutting a lot of those. So yeah, and there's a Dorothy Ashby Verve by request. The Ryubat of Dorothy. Really difficult album to get. Not an easy, Dorothy Ashby stuff, era, like from the 60s, very difficult to find. And there's another Bethlehem title. This is uh, Duke Ellington's Historically Speaking. That is May 12th as well. So May 12th on the Dorothy Ashby, the Duke Ellington, and the Gabo Zabo is April 14th. And then Mobile Fidelity announced Dire Straits on every street. The only title, why did they write the only title they didn't do from their studio albums? They're doing an MFSL S, uh, LP and SACD. There's no shipping date on it, but they have actually said shipping soon. So I'm assuming it's not going to be months and months or years like some of the mobile, mobile Fidelity titles. The fact that they announced it with shipping soon as a little blurb on it, I'm assuming it's going to be relatively quick. But don't hold it to me. You know, don't hold it. That's, that's what it said on their announcement, shipping soon. Uh, normally it's to be announced, you know? So yeah, let me show you the new arrivals, then I'll show you the gold membership stuff. Essentially the gold membership, if you buy anything from us online that's in stock, you get 15% off on the website, all the vinyl. Uh, you also have access to this video early and there's a page with a bunch of member exclusive records. It's like a small, curated selection of records that I put on the website. I will say this is one of the best weeks of me listing stuff that there has been as of yet. Okay, let's start with the newest two Tone Poets. My favorite is when they announce new Tone Poets. And I'm especially uh, happy about this one. This is Chet Baker, Sings and Plays with Bud Shank. Chet Baker and Sings. This is a title that originally was on World Pacific. Yeah, this is the World Pacific, Pacific Jazz, excuse me. This is a Pacific Jazz title. Uh, don't wait on this. Everybody, five times a week I hear, oh man, when are they gonna reissue the last, you know, you know, Chet Baker Sings, it's like a $200 Tone Poet. They said they're gonna reissue it. Uh, and from what I heard, they come out in like dribs and drabs, but still a $200 record, everybody wants it. Don't wait, it's here now. And it's not $200. You won't have to wait three years for a recut, you know, a recut, or a repress, excuse me. I uh, particularly like the non-Blue Note Tone Poets. If they're doing a non-Blue Note Tone Poet, I've said this multiple times, they're typically exceptional. Not that the Blue Note Tone Poets aren't, but they're assumed to be exceptional. But some of the non-Tone, excuse me, some of the non-Blue Note stuff, you know, it's... In the beginning, I was a little leery of it. Like, let me listen to it. I'm not really sure. I'm not too familiar with this. The Gerald Wilson Orchestra. I'm not too familiar with this. That kind of thing. But, you know, after listening to every non-Blue Note Tone Poet and just being wowed, it just got to the point where it's like, pick it up. They're just absolutely fantastic. And we've got standing the lead, Tarantines, Mr. Natural. I believe this was part of the LT series from the early 80s, which essentially was when they combed the vaults and released a bunch of stuff that had not uh, previously seen the light of day. Yeah, it's got a copyright date of 1980, so I'm guessing this was 
part of the LT series of unreleased stuff that didn't come out until 1980-81, but getting the formal uh, Tone Poet treatment here. I got a partial restock from Sam Records. Most of the new arrivals came in it as well, but I've got more on the way, but I'll show you what I have. The new Lester Young. They did this with a 10 inch, a bonus 10 inch. This is $10 cheaper without the bonus 10 inch. Love Sam Records, audiophile label out of France, specializing in reissuing of French titles. From my top 100 imprint analog records you should own list, Nathan Davis's Live in Paris. It's live in Paris, but it's more of a studio sound to it. Unbelievably fantastic, fun record. I highly recommend this. That's why it's on the list. Chet Baker titles they do are all great. This is uh, with Bobby Jasper. Look at the, uh, I've showed this before, but I mean, look what they're doing here. They're doing the original session photography on the front. They're replicating the flip back covers on the back. It's really the equivalent of the Tome Poet of Europe. They are that high quality. Fantastic series. I highly recommend it. Ronald Bright Trio. Same thing, using original photography in the front. Flip back cover. Chet Baker Volume 2. These were studio albums. You know, a lot of these musicians, they'd go over to Europe, they'd cut a record, come home. You might not know about it in the States for 15, 20 years until it got reissued here as an alternate, you know, album title. Jazz Sir Serene. This is great. Milt Jackson, Barney Weiland. Originally on Phillips. We've got Donald Byrd, Bobby Jasper, 58. There's another new arrival coming from, I think it's Donald Byrd. Is it Donald Byrd, Barney, Barney Weiland, 58? I think I have that coming in another week, week and a half, and there's some more restocks of some of the other new arrivals from them going to be on that shipment. A uh, restock of Parisian Thoroughfare, Donald Byrd, one of my favorite jazz covers. Donald just sitting there eating. Old, big old pile of french fries. Donald Bird in Paris. Uh, let's get to some more of the new arrivals. Let me show you the box sets before I forget them. Lincoln Parks. Methora 24 LP set. Includes the album. Uh, and then live rarities 2003 to 2004. So four disc set. This is the box set version. I feel like there might be a single disc of this in there as well. But this is pretty reasonable. This is, you know, four disc box set under a hundred bucks. This is the uh, Magnolia Electric Company. Hmm. Recordings from the uh, prolific era of Jason Molina's career. Uh, exceptionally well done box set. This is a wooden box. This is a wooden box with a slide door. And it's really not, it's a little over a hundred bucks. Ain't that something? It says the electric company on it there. I was, was having, was having flashbacks. Not good ones, like, like war type flashbacks. But that price, 120 bucks. All right. The People's Champ. Quinn XCII. I believe uh, he would be the people's champ according to this cover. Two versions of the Ellie Goulding album. We've got the new album, let's see, Higher Than Heaven, 140 gram eco color mix. Sleeve made with recycled board and a recycled plastic bag. And we've got the 180 gram black vinyl. So we got colored, which is the indie exclusive, and then the black vinyl. New album on Blue Note, Return to Casual, Walter Smith III. Love the cover. It's kind of got a very vintage Blue Note vibe. Let's see, this is Rustin Kelly, The Weakness. Guessing that's the uh, black vinyl version, and then we've got 
This is purple, maybe the India exclusive on purple vinyl. Okay, these next two records technically came out a week ago, but they have been my, uh, the bane of my existence for the last two weeks because we ordered them. The first shipment got lost by UPS. The second shipment got destroyed by UPS. And the third shipment arrived a couple days ago. And that is the Blue Note Classics of Sam Rivers' Fuchsia Swing Song, all analog cut by Kevin Gray, and one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Herbie Hancock album, Imperial Islands. Imperial Isles. This has the uh, original Cantaloupe Island on it that uh, us three did in the late 80s, early, maybe 92, 93. Had a huge hit with it. Great album, musically and sonically. Okay, but they're in stock, ready to go. Non-damaged, non-destroyed, and non-lost. Let's see. Neutral Milk Hotel on Avery Island. Hmm. We've got Nancy Sinatra. Again, Nancy and uh, Lee Hazelwood. What is this for Nancy Sinatra? Number four in the Nancy Sinatra all archive series. Features audio freshly remastered from the original analog tapes by Grammy nominated engineer, John Baldwin. This is gonna be hot. Anderson Pack, Malibu. This is the RSD Essential White Splatter on Orange Vinyl. We have not had this album in a long time, oddly enough, but when it was in print, we sold uh, an absolute ton of these things. And I don't, you know, couldn't tell you what this is musically. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh my God, Mike. How do you not know who Anderson Pack is? I'm sorry, guys. I just don't know. But I know it sells really well. And I'm guessing this is going to be really popular because it hasn't been in print in a while. And uh, it's on white splatter and orange vinyl. Record Store Day Essential. It is a, uh, it is a Record Store Day title. And essentially, you have to buy it from a Record Store Day, like authorized Record Store Day store. So no Target, Amazon, that type of thing. Only an independent store that signed up for Record Store Day. Speaking of record store day, they contacted me, uh, started getting phone calls, and were, my rep was like, uh, Mike, we're going to have to ship these on pallets. The amount of money this is going to cost to ship this stuff in UPS uh, is outrageous. So we're going to send it to you by, by semi. Is that okay? That's the quantity of record store day stuff I have coming this year. It is obnoxious, but like I said in the past, this is one of the best record store days I've seen in many, many years. It has a lot of records that are going to tick the boxes for a, a wide swath of people. There'll be more videos, record store day related videos in the coming weeks. Let's see, Charles Mingus, a modern jazz symposium. This is on Newland. Newland is mastered by Kevin Gray. I've heard nothing but fantastic things. There's a Jerry Mulligan title that they did. From this series, all good things. Uh, officially licensed from Bethlehem. But nice. They've, this is how they come in this Japanese style sleeve. They store the record on the back, so you're not going to get seam splits. Four bonus tracks previously unavailable on uh, LP. This should be quite good. The Ohio Players, live in 1977. This is a double blue vinyl LP. Let's see. <laughs> Disc two is fire part one and fire part two on <laughs> side two. Let's see. Halstrom, the strange case of. This is a restock. We got a few Blue Note, Tom Poet, Blue Note Classic restocks. I figured I'd show them to you. J.J. Johnson, the eminent J.J. Johnson, Blue Note Classic, 1500 series title, very expensive and hard to find clean and original. Uh, Blues Nick, J Jackie McLean, both all analog cut from the original analog tape by Kevin Gray. One of my favorite Herbie, I love the 70s, like the early funky, Herbie Hancock, you know, I mean, and then he had a couple albums that were good, but they weren't the best. And then he did 
Future Shock, which was a huge, a huge hit for him. But this era of Herbie, fantastic. The Prisoner, Blue Note Tone Poet. Got a restock of Blue Note Classic, Horse Parlin, Speaking My Peace. This is, I believe, so this Light in the Attic. I, I don't know what the deal is here, but this is the Light in the Attic exclusive edition of Lou Reed's Transformer. Don't know the mastering. Uh, all it says on the hype sticker, it is pressed on bronze colored vinyl and limited to a thousand copies worldwide. So it's, uh, yeah, not too terribly common. But uh, yeah, there you go. Hollywood Rose, the roots of Guns N' Roses. So I think this is, uh, yeah, all songs recorded January 1984 in Hollywood, California. All songs performed by Axl Rose. So this is the early, early. Izzy uh, Stradlin. Yeah. Hmm. This is on red and white splatter vinyl. We've got Joey Badass. The, uh, Joey Badass, the, 2000 is the name of the album. And it's a double. Let me digest this cover. What in the world's going on here? Bimbo Core. Scene Queen. Bigger, Badder, Bimbo. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. The cover makes me want to just listen to it. I'm sure it's probably not good, but what do I know? All right. Vector, Black Future. Glass Animals, man, I haven't seen this in a long time. How to be a human being. Not too terribly old of an album, but originals of this were getting to be quite expensive. Braid, Frame and Canvas, 25th anniversary edition on silver vinyl. Includes a free download. Let's see, Mud Honey. This is the loser edition of Plastic Eternity. A loser edition is just first pressing on colored vinyl. Continuing with the Doro campaign of, you know, all the Doro records you could ever possibly want is uh, Calling the Wild. I gotta say they probably, I don't know how many albums she's done, but I feel like we've had roughly about 20 of these things over the last year. Doral, Love Me in Black. Limited purple vinyl, including an etching on side four. And a couple more. Mid-Atlantic Story. This is volume three. This is from New Merrill. So it's kind of a spoof of the uh, lowrider uh, low comps. This is on tricolor vinyl. And then last but not least, maybe last but least, I'm not sure, Dread Zeppelin. Deja Voodoo. This is on splatter of vinyl. I've listened to some of their stuff. It's, uh, it's entertaining. I like it. Okay, let me show you guys the stuff we are putting up on the gold membership. Like I said many times in the past, the gold membership, if you buy a lot of stuff from us, it makes sense. You get 15% off all the in-stock records. You spend 150 bucks a month, you break even. You spend more than that, you pocket money. But you also have the ability to buy, again, it's a small curated selection. I put about 30 to 50 records up every week, Monday at 11 o'clock, Arizona time. So everything I'm going to show you is going to be online at the exact same time, Monday at 11 o'clock Arizona time. A bunch of killer stuff in there. I mean, this was, I just happened to go through a couple of boxes of stuff and pull some stuff off the shelf at home. That was really good. The Smiths, Strange Ways, Here We Come. This is a U.S. promo copy, gold stamp promo. The Smiths, U.S. Meat is Murder, gold stamp promo. All these records are like unplayed. Gold stamp promo of the Smiths rank.
a really super clean copy of uh, the faces. A knot is as good as a wink. This has the poster in it. Patty Smith's horses on Arista. Actually, a lot of this stuff is a few bands. The Smiths, the Faces. Uh, here's a uh, Small Faces comp. UK pressing on Immediate. Primus, the Brown album. This is a first US pressing. I think it came out in 97. Slayer, South of Heaven. This record from the collection I got it from, I bought this from a guy who essentially had a primary country collection. This record's never been played. He had two of them. He had a promo and he had this one. This is Yosef Latif on Riverside. This is an extremely difficult album to find in this condition in one piece. This is Small Faces. Nut gone. This is in the original circular, uh, I guess, jacket, but not really. But it actually includes, it originally came in a plastic bag with like a brass button snap. The bag is torn, but it has one half of the button snap. The other half was torn off. But this record is just unplayed. So difficult to find in this condition. Nice run of Susie and the Banshees. Promos. Tinderbox, gold label promo. Peep Show, Gold Label Promo. Through the Looking Glass, Gold Label Promo. Cool in the Gang. This is a sealed original of, uh, what is the Spirit of? Uh, this album. That's a brain fart. The real nice clean copy of Stephen Stills uh, in Shrink. Real nice white cover, original Atlantic. Oh, more Smiths. Gold label promo of Louder Than Bombs. Now some gas. I bought recently an additional copy of this from my collection. So that or this one, one of those is in my collection. The other one is here. This is an original Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm section on Contemporary. I graded it VG, VG, but it's really playable. It's got the a couple of barely feelable marks that maybe they make a little noise, but it's they're so buried in there. A great listenable copy of an original of Art Pepper Meets the Rhythm Section in mono. Eddie Suzuki, New Hawaii. I showed this in a video I kept, uh, I was going through some George Benson boxes. I found this sealed copy. I found another non-sealed copy, so I never got to opening this, so I'm just gonna put the sealed copy online. It's sealed, but the shrink is torn. Kind of a Hawaiian psych record. It's a little all over the place musically. Worth a listen to. The Flaming Groovies Now, real nice near mint copy, I believe, and shrink. A random Bill Wyman record from the Netherlands I just happened to throw on there. A real clean copy of There Goes the Rhyme and Paul Simon original U.S. pressing. Probably a promo at some point, I would think, because you typically don't see hype stickers directly on the jacket. They usually put them on the shrink unless it was a promo, but there's no uh, documentation to say it's a promo. Real nice copy of Miles Davis in person Friday night, original Columbia 6i. Milt Jackson, Plenty, Plenty Soul. Late 60s pressing. Miles Davis at Carnegie Hall, early 60s, Columbia 2i pressing, black writing. I haven't even showed you the most expensive, most desirable record yet. Must be saving that for... Oh man, there's such gas in here left. Oh man, this is, this is good stuff. Oh, I'm glad I already have all these albums. It's at, almost at the end. Public Image, number nine. This came out in the late 80s. Not a very easy album to get, pretty uncommon. In-store promo copy of the Doobie Brothers, minute by minute with the in-store sticker on it. This is the single disc promo version of The Clash's uh, 
Sandista now. One disc only, promo, promo version, white label. This is a transcription disc, essentially. This is the Pretenders Live. This was given out to radio stations. This is the Pretenders Live at the Santa Monica Civic Center. When's the last time you've seen a really nice clean copy of Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay? Original vault in the shrink. Uh, you know, not common in Arizona. Uh, Reconstruction, REM. This is a gold label promo as well. An original, R. Pepper, Surf Ride. Copy, recently got another of, and uh, this was about the same condition as the one I got. So, we're selling this one. Still not the best record in this lot. Jefferson Starship. This is just a sealed copy of Nuclear uh, Furniture. Joni Mitchell. Don Juan's Reckless Daughter, still sealed original, 70s pressing. Linda Ronsat, Living in the USA, that's a 70s sealed pressing, right? 70s came out, yeah, 78. Boys Don't Cry, The Cure, 80s PVC. A sealed copy of Emerson Lake and Palmer's Trilogy from, what, 72, I think this came out? Not an easy record to find sealed. The Cure, Head on the Door. Don't mess around with Jim. Jim Croce, just a real clean copy. Not an easy record to find in this condition. The Flying Burrito Brothers. Cover's got wear to it, but the record is really nice. Some more Flying Burrito Brothers. We've got Susie and the Banshees. Some more faces. You can see like these all kind of came out of a couple of boxes. The Smiths, the Susie and the Banshees, Flying Burrito Brothers, the small faces. Ooh la la, really nice. The cover's not been all trash, you know, it kind of had the gimmick cover that got beat up a lot. There are but four small faces. And here's the big one. I showed this in the video from that Mega Jazz Hall I just recently picked up. This is the copy I showed on that video. It's amazing how this isn't the cleanest one in my collection. The record is a toss up. They're both near mint, the one I have in this one. My cover is just like a smidge whiter. But this is an original first pressing, US pressing, uh, 466 West 50th Street of Miles Davis's cooking. This is, this is like a blue chip record. You buy this, it just becomes more and more desirable. There are not a ton of them out there. There's definitely not a ton of them out there in this condition. You know, you typically will find the second pressing, the New Jersey address. They're typically VG plus if you're lucky, but to find a first pressing, 50th Street, in near mint condition, uber rare. And uh, yeah. And one more faces record, long player, real clean copy. Again, 11 o'clock Arizona time. Those will all be on the gold member page. So, yeah, check us out online, guys, at theingroove.com. Until next time.